Lump, the greater good. It was a lovely day in Maritime Bay. The sun was shining, birds were singing, and a gentle breeze was blowing from the sea. Sprout nodded to himself. Yep, nice day. He narrowed his eyes. Granted, it could be better. The populace doesn't call you Emperor Sprout anymore. Hey, they don't even call you Deputy Sprout anymore. His eyes turned into angry slits until he could barely see the shop on the other side of the street anymore. And that shop window looked better when the anti-unicorn posters had still been up. And it has been weeks since our last Pegasus attack drill, and- A sharp pop made him blink. You're doing that thing again, boss. Sweets quipped and started to chew her bubblegum again. You know, the thing where you go all angry eyes and reminisce about the good old days when you had an angry robot tank thingy and declared war on two pony races? He gave her a look, and she grinned. I was thinking that it was a nice day, he finally said, being careful not to deny or confirm her guess. Mm, it is. Sweets conceded and blew another bubble. After the inevitable pop, she shrugged. Would be a much nicer day if our unicorn entrapment devices in this part of the main street didn't keep trapping curious unicorn visitors. Yeah, that'd be nice. Canterlogic already has an uphill battle in the PR department without these malfunctions. Sprout gave an inconspicuous part of the road a closer look. Even when knowing what to look for, it was tough to notice the outlines of the sliding mechanism hidden under the cobblestone. But at a moment's notice, they could reveal the trap's base plate. Although, to be fair... He muttered. They actually do exactly what my mother designed them to do. Miss Cloverleaf has always been enthusiastic when it came to activating machinery. Less so when it came to deactivating it. Sprout stepped onto the hidden mechanism, and he jumped around on it. It seems deactivated. Uh, must be some sort of loose wire. Sweets mused, and gave the area around the mechanism a closer look. I still say that you should have lobbied harder to actually dig them out instead of just securing the activation buttons. He let out a sigh. I tried, but at the end of the day, I'm just the junior product developer. You are her son, and your position is made up. She muttered. He winced, but she was of course correct on both accounts. After he had resigned from the sheriff's office in shame after demolishing Sonny's home, and trying to start a race war, yes, yes, his mother has been kind enough to offer him a job at her factory. He did have a knack for coming up with ideas, so it wasn't even the worst fit, but he indeed was the first junior products developer at Canterlogic. Yeah, but she didn't listen. At the end of the day, she looked at the cost of digging up all of her gizmos, and decided it was just cheaper to maintain them. Eh. She shoot her gun this way and that. I still say that we should have done the right thing. It'd be a sign. We could have said that we do it the cussier way for the greater good. <laughs> the greater good? He smirked. Yeah, you go ahead and tell her that. Well, then maybe she could come down here and beat the trap test dummy instead of volunteering her son. Sweets nudged a seemingly random part of the cobblestone before smiling. Oh, I think I found the loose part. Sprout frowned. He was still parsing her first sentence. Wait, what do you mean with the trap test... Sweet stomped down hard, and Sprout felt the machinery directly below him come to life before he heard it. Wait, let me- The sliding doors moved to the side with much more speed than he had anticipated, and he did a literal mid-air somersault before landing, on the metal plate of the unicorn entrapment device. Ah, <sighs> shoot. He managed to mutter before the trap activated. The metal parts sprung free almost instantaneously, locking him in a dark box. Oh, great. He rolled his eyes. My second time in one of these stupid boxes after that Izzy's first visit. And I'm still wondering why we didn't install lights in these traps. I mean, sure, bah ha ha, the evil unicorn got trapped, but then what? Just let him rot in a dark cell? He made a mental note to suggest some quality of life features for whatever next iteration of these traps there might be. For the moment though, he had more pressing concerns. Starting with number one, why am I still in here? He reached into the small bag hanging over his shoulder where his old badge used to be and fished out a cell phone. Phones and wireless communication via short-range radio were, of course, no alien concepts to him, but wireless phones had been news to the Earth Pony populace. Granted, we don't have quite as much of a pressing need for them, especially since there are so few of these antennas that only work for calls within Maritime Bay and Suffer Heights, respectively, but... He poked one of the speed dial contacts and could hear a faint ring coming from the other side of the metal wall in front of him. Good afternoon. Sweets answered the phone in her best mocking sing-song voice. You have reached the Canterlot Field Office. This is sweet. Would you kindly push the button? A groan. Uh, you never let me have any fun, boss. Fine. Let me, um, lock the, this. What the hey? Sprout blinked. This did not sound like your usual banter. Um, what's going on out there? Instead of answering him directly, Sweets finally pushed the button, causing the metal cage to retract back into the ground. It took Sprout a few moments to get used to the sudden change in brightness. Okay, what's... 
He frowned when he realized that she wasn't looking at him. Instead, she was looking past him. He turned around and blinked when he saw two Earth ponies, a stallion and a mare, walking down the street in their general direction. Except that they weren't exactly Earth ponies in the strictest sense. Because Earth ponies did not have glittering coats and manes that caused the sunlight to dance off their smooth bodies. In fact, the only things about them that were not glittering were their saddlebags. Although they were looking really expensive. I bet you ten bits that this is somehow Sunny's doing, Sprout muttered. You know, come to think of it, it would be nice if Sunny was in town right now. Sweets answered without taking on the bet. Citizens of Canterlot! The stallion shouted when he apparently felt that he had the attention of every pony in a half a mile radius. Fear not, we have come to put an end to this time of dread and agony! Well, that doesn't sound ominous at all. Sweet snarked. Also, this is Maritime Bay. Ah. <sighs> he frowned mildly at that. Citizens of Maritime- You will not have to suffer under the tyranny of magic for much longer! His companion cut him off to keep up the momentum. Several ponies in Sprout's vicinity slowly turned to look at him. Whoa, whoa! Sprout snapped. Way to jump conclusions there, these folks have nothing to do with me, okay? He huffed. I swear, you try to keep things the way they are once, and you never live it down. We only request a meeting with the descendants of Cloverleaf! Cloverleaf? I never heard of any- Sprout froze when he realized that he had a very similar name. Very, very often. And the ponies around him came to the same conclusion because now all ponies were looking at him. And they were not looking pleased. It's as if my reputation wasn't ruined enough already. I apologized. I resigned. I accepted that I'm not the hero. And now these two walking disco balls are trying to drag me through the mud again. He narrowed his eyes at them. Sweets, why don't you go back to the factory? If it's all the same to you, I'd rather- Now! Fine. She muttered and popped her gum one last time. Call me if you need anything, but don't call me if you get roped into another stupid plot to divide the pony races. He didn't bother to reply, and instead marched forward. I am Sprout, he announced. And I am the son of Phyllis Cloverleaf, so you're probably looking for me. The two strange ponies immediately focused their attention on him and hurried closer. Greetings, son of Phyllis. The stallion stood half a head taller than Sprout, but that was the least of the latter's worries right now. Your time of destiny has come. Right, right. Sprout forced a grin. Why don't we go to my place so you can tell me what's going on? Also, my name is Sprout. The stallion's smile faltered, but he quickly forced a grin of his own. Certainly. Lead the way, son of Phyllis. Well? The strange stallion announced after Sprout had led them into his room. Are you rich, or do all ponies live such a comfortable life? Somehow it made him sound like an indictment. A bit of column A, a bit of column B? Sprout tried. He of course knew that the Cloverleaf home was more impressive than the average house in Maritime Bay, but he suspected that these strange ponies simply had different views of what comfort meant. There was a long pause, and Sprout suspected that the other stallion had absolutely no idea what a column was. I see. The sparkling pony finally muttered. Anyway, son of Phyllis, pack your bags! Destiny awaits us! Right... Sprout said after a long pause of his own. First of all, my name is still Sprout, and why don't you start by explaining who you are, what you are, and what this is all about? The stallion snorted, but then merely rolled his eyes. I see that some pony down your line of ancestors screwed up somewhere. No fault of your own, but still aggravating. Let's keep this brief. He waved at the pony by his side. The mare cleared her throat. Very well. She said. My name is Cotton Gleam, and this is my brother, Brick Gleam. We are the children of Cedar Gleam. And as you have certainly deduced from our appearance, we are crystal ponies. Crystal ponies? I never even heard of them. He frowned. And are those really your names? Because, uh, bricks and cotton don't gleam. The same goes for cedars, but I'm not here to badmouth your mother or father. They do in the Crystal Empire. Cotton Gleam said. She seems less annoyed by his question than he had feared, but her look told him not to make fun of their names. Ever. So, this... Crystal Empire is an Earth Pony country, except shinier? The siblings hesitated. Few Crystal Ponies have a horn or wings. Brickleam ended up answering the question. And it's not a country, more like a kingdom. Larger than Canterlot's. Congleam added. But not larger than... what was it called again? Manhattan? I've never heard of either of those, so I'll just take your word for it. Y Brickleam shook his head. Despite being made of crystal, his mane still moved like real hair. Somehow. You have never heard of Canterlot? 
but you are the descendants of Cloverleaf, destined to accompany us to Canterlot and to take care of things after we destroyed magic and banished the Crystal Empire once more. What? Uh, what? Sprout unceremoniously sat down on the floor. I, I, I mean, what? Brickleam gave him a long and pointed look. Which part of this was news to you? All of it! Sprout yelped, then thought about it. Okay, you did hint at the magic part before, but you actually want to destroy magic? And you want to banish the Crystal Empire? I thought that's your home! We do hail from the Crystal Empire. Cotton Gleam quickly spoke up when she saw her brother's angry expression. However, the Crystal Empire in its current form is a mockery, a hollow echo of its former glory. A glorious utopia run by the immortal and kind Princess Flurryhearts. Disgusting. A caricature of what it used to be. Sprout gave her a puzzled look. One of these descriptions had not been quite like the others. I don't know about you, but I am completely and utterly confused. But that doesn't deter me from actually being interested because I'm very invested in this. Now let's get on to our wondrous donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coldhard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Dash of Evergreen. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Gully 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will Christ Winky, Hatsaza, Riot Soul, Maverick, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.